All right, guys. Hey, good to see you guys. I know I haven't seen you for a couple of days. Uh, just give me a little bit of update. I am on a quarantine. Um, my son tested positive for uh, COVID um, officially on Monday uh, night after school. So I have been um, out um, for um, obviously Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm not there today, uh, which is whatever Thursday or Friday for you. So, um, I'm out, but I'm also here. So, um, everybody's good and safe, um, and we're just kind of, uh, taking it day by day. So, a lot of you guys, or not a lot, but some of you guys had reached out to me about, uh, the Canvas quiz, just saying, hey, yikes, Mr. Stare, what is going on here? Um, you can see that we're in the notes packet, we're taking a look at three variables, and let me just even give a brief overview of what happened um, you know with that idea all right so when we're looking at this right here we are starting to delve into three dimensional type equations in the past we've really been looking at two dimensional right um, this is something that you guys are familiar with uh, you know just your standard plane okay but what happens here is that we're adding a third dimension. This is the third dimension. And it is hard to draw this. I will admit, when anytime you're trying to do something three-dimensional um, in a two-dimensional space, uh, it's hard to draw. But I just had a great idea. Let me pause this video and I'll be right back. All right, got it. Now, before I go any further, we're not talking about a coordinate plane anymore. We're talking about what's called a coordinate space. When we're talking about something in three dimensions, we're talking about something in space. All right, here is my superb idea right here. All right, so I got a Rubik's Cube. This Rubik's Cube is really what we're looking at in three dimensions, all right? When I'm thinking about this, I have a dimension that goes forwards and backwards. I have a dimension that goes side to side, and then I have a dimension that goes uh, vertical, right? So it has something in these three dimensions. That's really what we're talking about with this. Now, instead of it just being a two-dimensional plane, X and Y, we now have three dimensions, X, Y, and Z right here, all right? And so instead of looking at X as side to side, X is now the forwards and backwards dimension. Y is no longer the up and down dimension. Sorry, I don't know where, what's going on with my camera here. The Y is no longer the up and down dimension, but it's now the side to side dimension. Hmm... What is happening here? Huh, that was weird. All right, so the Y is now the side to side dimension. And the Z dimension is the one that goes up and down, right? We don't call these ordered pairs anymore. We call them ordered triples, all right? So if I have a number of one, negative two, positive five, this is how I graph it. It's still in alphabetical order, X, comma y, comma z, I go backwards one or forwards one. It would be forwards one. Then I would go what? Right two or left two? I would go left two, so I'm over here. Then I'd go up or down five. Because it's positive, it would go up, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And that's where all of these dimensions right here, they all meet, okay? It's basically like I form the corner of a cube. Now, a cube would be the, you know, the same distance in all directions here, but it's almost like I went, if I'm starting right here, I went forward one, then I went to this direction, and I know I went five up, but if I think about it, it's just moving a vertical distance up or down right here, okay? So that's really what we're thinking when we do this. 
um, we still can find X, Y, and Z intercepts. Uh, we can still check to see if points are solutions to an equation uh, by plugging those values in, making sure that it's true uh, if we have a system for all equations. All right, but this is really what's happening here, okay? And this is kind of where we're going to go, right? You, so you can see that instead of graphing lines, these would be planes, these equations we're talking about. Now, first off, let me say there is no way we are graphing these equations. So please don't stress about that, okay? It's hard enough to graph a point in three dimensions on a two-dimensional space. So we're not going to be graphing planes, all right? But you can kind of see that, hey, they still have a no solution, right? They still have what we call like a no unique solution where there's not a single point in coordinate space that all three of the planes exist. But sometimes there is. Maybe it's a line, right, that all three of them exist. Or maybe it is an actual individual point, and you can kind of see that happening right here. That's the only point that all three of those planes intersect at. All right. So when we're doing this here, if there's one solution, we write our answer as an order triple. And again, that's just an X, Y, comma, Z, or sometimes we see different letters. Maybe we see A, B, C. We just write them in alphabetical order. Um, R, S, T is another common one. When we're looking at what it means to be in standard form, we just have a number in front of the x variable plus a number in front of the y. Now, maybe that's a negative number, so maybe it's minus. And then plus a number in front of the z. Now, you've seen me do this a couple times here. This is how I make my z's, just to distinguish it with uh, so it's not a 2. And it equals just another number, right? 17, 2, negative 20, anything like that, okay? So we're going to go slow through these here, right? But we're just trying to get the basic steps down. All right, so I'm going to flippity-flop over here. We got this big old equation here, all right? And what I'm going to do, because first off, whoa, second off, three equations, and third off, three variables, We've got a lot of things to account for. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to number the equations. So instead of me just saying, oh yeah, I'm talking about the 4x plus y minus z equals 14 equation, I could say, hey, I'm talking about number 3. Okay? So here are going to be the basic steps, and we'll kind of fill it out as we go. But as we are going to eliminate one variable from all equations. We're going to eliminate one variable from all equations. Now, we are not graphing these like I said. So those three ways that we reviewed, graphing, substitution, and elimination, we're really focused on elimination here. Okay. Substitution can work, but man, if I got Z by itself here on the top one, I'd have to plug it into the Z down here, and there's just lots of letters that you might see could happen. All right, so here's what we're going to do. First off, it doesn't matter how we're going to, which letter we're going to eliminate. Let's just look up here. Does it make sense for what we know about elimination to eliminate the X's? the y's or the z's. I think it makes the most sense to eliminate the z's. Now here's how we're going to do this here. When we eliminate one variable from all the equations, we're going to choose two, choose two equations, then we're going to do the unused one and one other okay so this is kind of a weird way to say it but let's do it first and then we'll see if that kind of makes sense here all right so we said z which two equations would you use to eliminate the z 
To me, it makes the most sense to use 1 and 2. 2x minus y plus z equals 4. And x plus 3y minus z equals 11. When I'm adding these straight down, I get 3x plus 2y equals 15. Guys, you have got to be careful. Okay, Negatives, silly mistakes, multiplying, adding wrong, those kind of things, that will totally mess this problem up. This work, look at it, it's just one problem on the entire page here a paper. That means it's going to take us some time to solve this problem. Okay? It's not hard. It's just uh, a little confusing. So don't make those silly mistakes. Alright. I did 1 and 2 and I got a new equation. Okay? I'm going to call this equation 4. I have a 1, a 2, and a 3. Now I have equation 4. Before I go any further, okay? I chose two equations here to actually eliminate. Perfect. Now I have to do my unused one, which was number three. I didn't use it yet. And one other. So if I write down equation three, 4x plus y minus z equals 14, which other one, one or two, is the easiest to eliminate the z's. I say it's equation 1. Now, you could choose equation 2. You would just have to manipulate it a little bit. All right. So when I'm doing this here, looks like I can add it. I get 6x. Ooh, y's cancel. Didn't mean for that to happen, but it was going to happen. Z's also cancel. And it is 18. All right. Now, we want to be thinkers of math. We don't always want to just say, hey, eliminate X first. We want to do the one that's the easiest because it's going to require less work from us. All right. So I have equation four. I have equation five. Right. There's step one. Look at this. My two equations, there is no Z. This is kind of a little bit of a unique scenario in that, you know what? There's actually no y either. That's gonna excuse me. That's gonna make it a little bit easier for us. All right. So this is my second step here. I'm gonna use number four and five to solve my two by two system. Okay. So now we're back at a problem that we actually already know. Now, to be honest with you, I could have just solved this here, right? And so equation 5 is the same thing as saying x equals 3. So if I know that 4 is 3x plus 2y equals 15, and I know number 5 is x equals 3, couldn't I just say that 3x plus 2y equals 15. All right, and that's going to give us here, if I just use these, that's going to give us our first answer. In this case, we got x equals 3. What I'm going to do is plug my first answer back into four or five okay equation four or five and then really the idea behind that is i want to plug it into an equation that has that letter plus one more so it doesn't make sense for me to put x here at the top because it has an x but there's two different variables it makes the most sense here for me to plug it into number four and that's what i did it has an x and it has a y 9 plus 2y equals 15. Again, I could subtract it over and make 2y equal to 6, and y equals 3. So there's my next number. 
the last step and for how long this could take us really has four steps first and second answer plug into equation one two or three okay so now I have two of my answers I have a three for X and I have a three for Y I'm gonna choose any of them it really doesn't matter I could choose number one two X minus Y plus Z equals four I could choose equation number two X plus three Y minus Z equals eleven or I could plug it into the third of 4x plus y minus z equals 14. Either of those or any of them. 2 times x minus y plus z equals 4. And then I could say again x plus 3y minus z equals 11 and then I have 4 x plus y minus z equals 14 all of these will come up to give me the same answer you only have to do it once right but if I say 6 minus 3 plus z equals 4 or 3 plus z equals 4, z is 1. 3 plus 9 minus z equals 11. 12 minus what number is 11? 12 minus 1 is 11. And then I have 12 plus 3 minus z equals 14. 15 minus what number is 14 and that number is 1 guys this won't be easy you're gonna have to work at this you're gonna have to make a mistake okay it's just gonna have to happen you're gonna have to work together to see if you guys can get the right answer all right but nonetheless my first number that I found was the first number in the order triple because it's alphabetical order. My next number, alphabetical order, was the second number. And Z is the last number. Again, you don't have to find them in alphabetical order. Okay? Find it in the way that's the easiest for you. Alright, so three, comma three, comma one. That is the order triple in which those three planes intersect. All right, let's flippity flop over here. Let's take a look at, um, let's see, what do I have here? Let's take a look at, kind of I came up with a couple things. Hmm. Where, oh, there it is. All right, here are some unique scenarios. And maybe we're not quite ready for it, but let's look at these here. So let's say that I have 2x and 2y. 2z equals negative 2, 2x and 3y and 2z is 4, and x, y, z equals 1. If I add 1 and 3 together, so 2x and 2y plus 2z equals negative 2, x, y, and z equals 1. Okay, I'm going to try to eliminate, um, I'm going to try to eliminate the z's, okay? That means if I'm going to eliminate the z's, I need to multiply every single thing by negative 2, right? That's the only thing that's going to eliminate the z's. So here is a 1, again. Here is my new number 3. It's still 3, right? I only get 4 when I add it together. But 3 is negative 2x, negative 2y, minus 2z equals negative 2. And holy guacamole, 
look what just happened here. Zero equals zero, right? It's one of those unique scenarios where there may not be a unique solution. Again, we could keep trying that here. Again, I'm going to do the same problem here. I'm, now I'm just doing, I haven't done two, so I need to do two. 2x plus 3y uh, plus 2z equals 4. And again, 3, so x, y, and z. And I have to eliminate the same letter in both scenarios. So I did z on this one right here. I've got to do z right her also. In order to do z, looks like I still have 2 of 2x plus 3y minus, excuse me, plus 2z equals 4. And in order to do that, I'm just going to be multiplying by negative 2. So negative 2x minus 2y minus 2z equals negative 2. Again, that's still equation 3. Just manipulate it a little bit here. So now I have equation 5. See what happens here. My x's cancel. My z's cancel. Right? And I do come up with y equals 2. But if I start plugging that in, see how it's all going to cancel out, right? I'm just going to be left with basically a no unique solution. So sometimes if things start canceling and all letters cancel, okay, that's going to be just a random uh, unique scenario. Now, that's not going to happen too much for us. Uh, but what I do want to do here is I want to take a look again at some other problems. Okay, these ones are going to be a little bit messy, but that's okay. I mean, you know, mess is okay a little bit. All right, so here is a new problem. 2x minus y minus 3z equals 20. 3x plus y minus 6z equals 4 x plus 2y plus 9z equals negative 16. Again, we're going to have to be comfortable in just trying this, right? It's okay to make a mistake, but you got to make sure where you're making those mistakes at. Okay, so again, here's the problem. Let's see <sighs> which letter looks the easiest to eliminate. I'm going to eliminate Y from all three of them. If you disagree with that, perfect. Just pause the video and work the problem out. Your completely different work will be different than mine, but we will have the same answer. Okay? All right. So if I do Y, it looks like 1 and 2 might be up first. 2X minus Y minus 3Z equals 20. 3x plus y plus 6z equals 4. This is going to be my new equation for 5x plus 3z equals 24. Notice I have not used number 3 yet. So when I use equation 3, I want to make sure that I cancel the exact same Letter. So right here I canceled Y. So which one is easier to cancel Y with? I think equation 1. 2X minus Y. Oops. So here's what I'm saying. I just made a silly mistake. And this would cost me dearly. X plus 2Y plus 9Z minus 16. So plus 2Y. So 2X minus Y minus 3z equals 20. Notice I've got to be able to cancel these. So I'm going to multiply each of these by 2 in order for it to cancel. x plus 2y plus 9z equals negative 16. Oops, 
4x minus 2y minus 6z equals 40. So now that I'm going to have these eliminate, I'm going to have my equation 4 and my equation 5. It looks like 5x, y's are out of there, plus 3z equals 24. Looks like I came up with the exact same two equations, right? So this is just another scenario where there's no unique solution here. All right. All right, let's try one more. This one will have a solution. Let's see if I can write it here as I'm holding this. So again, this is just another problem here. 2x plus 5y minus 3z equals 14 x minus 2y plus 4z equals negative 12 negative x plus 3y minus 2z equals 13. All right, here we go. We got equation 1, 2, and 3. Now notice I'm circling them just to kind of denote, make sure that that number, those numbers don't run together. I think it's 12x or I think it's 2x, something like that. Just by looking at it, it looks like the x's are easiest for me to cancel. I'm going to start with 2 and 3. x minus 2y plus 4z equals negative 12, negative x plus 3y minus 2z right there. This will make equation 4, see you later, y plus 2z equals 1, I haven't used number 1 yet, I've got to use 1. 2x plus 5y minus 3z equals 14. Again, I canceled x's. I've got to see what's going to cancel the easiest with it. For me, it looks like equation 3 of negative x plus 3y minus 2z equals 13. It looks like now... I'm going to multiply each of these here by 2. So I still have my equation 1 of 2x plus 5y minus 3z equals 14. And then negative 2x plus 6y minus 4z equals 26. Now my x's are finally going to cancel. And I have my equation 5 of 11y minus 7z equals 40. Right, so here they are. We could put it together to make 4 and 5. Right, it might be the easiest to multiply each of these by 11. Negative 11, excuse me. So that means it would be for my equation for my new equation for it, negative 11y minus 22z equals negative 11. Equation 5 here is 11y minus 7z equals 40. See how my y's cancel? I'm left with negative 29z and positive 29 here on the right hand side. That means z equals negative 1. I have my first answer. All of that for my first answer. I need to now plug my first answer into an equation that has z and one other letter. Any preferences on 4 or 5? 
hopefully you're seeing that 4 would be a lot easier just because of the smaller numbers. Notice, right there it is, right? Don't use the new 4, use the old 4. So I have a y plus 2z equals 1. y minus 2 equals 1. What minus 2 is 1? 3. So now I have my z and y. It doesn't matter which uh, one that we're using. Okay, I'm just going to use number 2 for no particular reason here. Again, I don't know what x is. Minus 2y plus 4z equals negative 12. X minus 6 minus 4 equals negative 12. X minus 10 equals negative 12. I could add 10 to both sides, and X is negative 2. All right, now, one thing we could check is I know that these three numbers will work for equation 2, okay? It might be helpful just to see if they're going to check in all of them. All right, so if I put... Let's see what we got here. I said my answer was going to be negative 2, 3, and negative 1. If I put these in, this turns to a positive 2. This is 3 times 3 is 9. This is going to be plus 2. 2 plus 9 is 11, plus 2 is 13. We already established that it works in equation 2. This is 2 times negative 2, or negative 4. 5 times 3, or positive 15. This is going to be a positive 3 when I put the negative 1 in there. So negative 4 and 15 is 11, plus 3 is 14. So it does check out as far as my solution. This is my final answer. All right, guys. Check Canvas and see what's happening here for the rest of the period.